Madam DeFazio, Ranking Member Graves, and members of the committee, good morning. As the Associate Administrator of FEMA's Office of Response and Recovery, I want to thank you for the opportunity to discuss our ongoing recovery efforts and how FEMA is preparing for future disasters. Over the past two years, FEMA has supported disaster operations in 47 states and all six territories to include response and ongoing recovery efforts from historic hurricanes, floods, and wildfires. In 2019 alone, the President has already declared 56 major disasters and 13 emergency declarations. As noted, this is an unprecedented level of disaster activity and it has been costly in both of terms of life and property. So, uh, Chair Chairman, it is not normal uh, for what we've seen the past two years. Uh, during this time, FEMA's provided over $9 billion of financial assistance to disaster survivors. We have an estimated damage to infrastructure for the same time period is currently at $80 billion. However, FEMA cannot be the only solution. Our assistance is not designed to make individuals and communities whole after a disaster. Instead, our programs are designed to help recovery uh, progress forward and catalyze investments and engagement from the whole community. Therefore, in the wake of the historic 2017 disasters, FEMA developed its strategic plan describing the optimal disaster response and recovery as this, state managed, locally executed, and federally supported. In order to effectively carry out our mission, implement our strategic plan, and to address the range of challenges before us, the agency continues to find ways to improve and innovate. When disasters overwhelm state, local, tribal, and territorial partners, it is critical that FEMA has the right staff to support a timely response. Since 2017, FEMA has made significant changes to make sure the appropriate personnel are available to support the federal government's response, recovery, and provide positive results and outcomes to our disaster survivors. Today, I want to highlight two of those significant changes to FEMA's staffing model. First, the 2018 Incident Management Workforce Review works to permit FEMA to deploy the right people with the right skills to the right place at the right time to help our citizens. FEMA is realigning staff and consolidating duties where appropriate. We are currently working towards the implementation of the findings and look forward to the positive impact this will have on how we utilize our current disaster workforce. In addition, I also want to thank Congress for the passing of the Disaster Recovery Reform Act last year, which amended the Stafford Act to authorize FEMA to retain valuable knowledge, skills, and experience of our cadre of on-call response employees, our disaster workforce. In the spirit of innovation, FEMA has implemented both the public assistance delivery model na uh, nationwide. This simplifies the public assistance grant application process for our state, local, tribal, and territorial partners. And Section 428 uh, gives us the authority provided by Congress in the Sandy Improvement Act, which gives flexibility to applicants and expedites the overall project process. In addition, Congress has authorized a new pre-disaster mitigation program called BRIC, which with the goal of investing in proactive and research-supported community resilience rather than relying on reactive disaster spending, which will allow FEMA to effectively support our partners uh, from to recover from disasters. These authorities and initiatives are helping us deliver recovery assistance to your communities faster and more effectively than we have in the past. In the past few years, of disaster, uh, the disasters were historic, and the lessons learned continue to shape FEMA and the emergency management discipline as a whole. FEMA continues to work alongside our partners to provide key resources to, public, to the public during times of need. We recently released our 2019 Community Lifelines Implementation Toolkit for our community partners. This kit helps communities focus on the restoration of indispensable services, enabling continuous operation of critical business and government functions such as health, safety, and a better economic security and economic recovery. We will work to continue, we will continue to work with our partners to collaborate and enhance our overall approach to stabilization of lifelines. The unifying effort in emergency management community will be the rapid stabilization of community lifelines. This effort reflected uh, in the recent update of our national response framework. This update also includes the establishment of emergency support function 14, which enforces the importance of private sector and how critical that section is to our economic recovery after disasters. I am pleased to be with you. With, excuse me. I am pleased to be here today and re to represent the dedicated men and women of FEMA. Um, to my opinion, uh, the best in the federal government, and for the opportunity to discuss the, this important mission. I look forward to any questions and all questions you may have. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Al Alford.